This is the breakdown for today. Load management in the NBA. The champs are here. Two new champions at UFC this weekend and a five-star recruit flips. And we're going to find out who it is. Roland, no days off. What do you think about load, load management in the NBA? Look, load management is something that we've all reluctantly have had to get comfortable with because everybody in the NBA is doing it. Look, it's an 82 game season. There's multiple back to backs. There's multiple situations where they're playing three games in four nights. It's tough for these guys. So you have to understand that they're not going to play every night. The only problem that I have, and this is for the consumer strictly is for the person who goes to the game. Like myself, I'm a San Antonio Spurs fan. The Spurs not so good this year. So I want to go see, you know, players from other teams. So if I want to go watch Giannis and then I find out as I'm there in the arena, sitting down, eating some popcorn, maybe an alcoholic beverage or not, I'm not sure. Oof. And I find out that Giannis isn't playing, my night might be ruined because I don't want to go out and watch Chris Middleton and, and George Hill go up against the Spurs. So that's where I have the problem with it. I get it strategically, but they, they have to do something. They got to cut down the season 10 games lessen the back-to-backs they got to do something to help out here well, the nba has always been a fan-driven league they're 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 global now and this isn't hurting them just here you know in the u.s globally this is definitely going to hurt them if they want to expand and you know get bigger so, i think it's terrible. back in the 70s the 80s and 90s everybody was playing nobody sat out only if you were majorly hurt it's bad look for the nba and load load management is a huge huge issue that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I mean, personally, I've been a victim of load management. Like Roland said, going to San Antonio Spurs games, living in the area. We go and watch LeBron and the Heatles playing the Spurs. And LeBron and D-Wade are out. And Chris Bosh has to beat the Spurs, you know, single-handedly. So, yeah, it has sucked. But at the same time, I mean, you got to understand that for most of these teams, like the Clippers, who are the kings of load management with Kawhi and Paul George, it's get in the playoffs and go from there. They're not looking for home court advantage. They know that they can steal one on the road. At the, They're just trying to have their players healthy, you know, in the dog days of the summer when the NBA playoffs are going. So I, I see the load management angle, although it does suck for span, for fans. I mean, it's, it's something that we're going to have to deal with, I think, from here going forward. I do not think that there is any fixing this. I really don't. For that, But the champs are here. Take us into this one. Yeah, so the new champs are here. I got to give some flowers to Ben. He did call Jamal Hill to be the light heavyweight champion for this year, and the trend is going good for him. It's on the uptick. But for me as a fan, I do like that we have a new champion crown. It sucked that we had to see December happen where no champion was crowned. Now we can get this light heavyweight division moving again. It's not going to be stuck in the mud. And we probably have a contender, and it's already written. The drama's already written for it. Alex Pajeda, now that Glover has retired, Alex Pajeda can move up one division. And I like that matchup. We're going to get a stand-up strike fest between Jamal Hill and Alex Pajeda. I hope they book that fight soon. I don't think that that's going to happen. I'm just going to come in here real quick, and I'm going to say Jiri Prochaska, who already put out his damn trailer, you know, pre-fight trailer <laughs> in, in the, the snow, snow <laughs> barbarian as fuck, you know, just alpha, alpha saying, I'm coming. I mean, it was like a, a Dion Sanders in another galaxy talking about I'm coming in the most alpha way possible. Uh, you saw Jamal Hill respond to that video. I think that's a stand-up battle that's going to have to happen before Alex Pereira moves up. I think Alex Pereira owes, you know, Israel Adesanya a rematch just based off the fact that Izzy was the vet in the UFC. So Pereira against Jamal Hill, I think we're going to see an awesome stand-up battle. And Jamal Hill might still be the champ at the end of 2023, Justin. I like my chances with two fights in 2023. Jamal Hill, as far as as far as I go, might be a little hard to sell if you're Dana. I don't know if you want him as a champ for a long time because he doesn't have that, you know, that outspoken attitude and that, you know, presentation. Uh, but regardless of it, good win for him, new champ there. Brandon Moreno for me was just more of a, you know, heritage kind of thing, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to say it, but the quote that he said at the end of the fight when he and then they, they're throwing him out of the ring and covering him and they're throwing bottles at him and all that crazy stuff. It was good that he went to uh, enemy territory and he got the win. It was an exciting card. And uh, it was really fun to watch. All right, last and final, our five-star college football recruit flip. I ain't hard to find. those. What That was quoted by none other than Deion Sanders. Justin, why are we talking about Deion? Why are we talking about Coach Prime and this kid? 
We're talking about Coach Prime because he's done it again. You know, he did it at Jackson State, which I thought was a little bit harder because it's not a D1 college. It's an HBCU, and he flipped the number one cornerback over there, and he's got two for two now. He flipped the Miami guy to Colorado. He's got the two best corners uh, in the last two years. Teams are going to have trouble throwing on these guys. I think it's going to be real interesting. And like you said, I'm bringing my bags, and they're Louie. I ain't hard to find. Coach Prime, big up. But I'm not I'm not going to say Colorado's going to flip the switch right away and win 10 games. They're going to win five, but big time for Prime. Yeah, and I think also, you know, other than just Prime and looking bigger picture, this is just a, uh, a sign of the, the – the times are changing, you know, it's different. If you can get money behind you, if you can get some backing, you're going to be able to pull some of these guys. If you get some NIL backing, that's just a, the new era of NCAA football. We're going to see a bunch of this movement. We've already seen, like Justin said, um, Deion Sanders make his way with Colorado. They're ranked in the top 10 already. The recruiting class just based off of the transfer portal. They're already moving up there. So more things to come for Colorado and more things to come for other schools. Uh, with this NL, NIL fund. I know a lot of people were against it. They didn't they didn't like the idea of, you know, throwing money at these kids. But I think it only levels the playing field for all of the bigger schools. I know we're still going to see the Alabamas and the Georgias dominate, but I think we're going to be able to see some Colorado sneak in there. They can throw some money at some kids. So I, I, I like this. I like this all around. Yeah, I mean, it kind of surprised me a little bit when I see when I heard Justin say that Colorado might win five games because I know most people have them. Their season win total is going to be two and a half, three games next year in that conference. Although this is a big, you know, change, a big flip in the college football, you know, spectrum to Colorado from Miami, a university like Miami. Recently, you know, we saw Florida with a big time NIL deal fall through and a player decommit from them. You know, I'm not sure if he's picked where he's going, but I do feel like Colorado is on the uptick. But the early predictions, boys, I'm not trying to get ahead of the gun here. Early predictions are they're going to have a pretty rough first season, you know, even in the Pac-12. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. That was We Talking About Shop, and you can find it on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Look us up. Check us out on YouTube as well. That was our We Talking Shop. Thanks for watching.